All right, ladies and gentlemen, fellow coders, welcome to this next episode slash lesson, whatever you want to call it, in the Fresh Vote series, uh, where we are building a real-world Java web app from scratch, leveraging technologies such as Spring Boot and most recently Bootstrap. So in the previous um, video, we talked about how, or we we finished off the uh, the login screen just to make it look nice and be responsive. So on a mobile screen, it looks good. On a desktop screen, it looks good. Um, now we need to go to the create account screen and fix this guy up because it does not look good in comparison. So basically we should, or we could take, or go to the registration screen and uh, copy some of the stuff over. So first thing I'm gonna copy the style sheets that come from Bootstrap and paste those into the header so that we can have Bootstrap here. Again, note, I will be uh, pulling this out and putting it into one file called a fragment, but we'll talk about that later, such that I up update one file and it will update all these files. Um, it's not good to copy paste code really. Uh, and that is what I will be addressing in a later video. I will be bringing in uh, all this stuff. So the class container, card, card header, and card body like we had before. And I'll be putting it in here. And uh, the header won't say, please log in. The header will say register for an account because we want this to mimic the new page, register for an account. And then we can have our form exist inside of the card body. And we can close off our divs, one for the card body, one for the card, and one for the container. So that will augment this page a little bit, okay? It starts to look a little bit more like the, the other page. Next thing is the button uh, should have a class of btn, btn primary. If you remember, there's different types of buttons, primary, secondary, info, danger. Uh, it just changes the color of the button. So if you wanted to make this uh, a slightly different color, like info, makes it more of a teal, or it can be a danger, which makes it like a red button. Ooh. Uh, but no, we want it to be primary, which makes it a nice blue color, which kind of says, hey, click me. Next up is our uh, form elements here. We want to make these into form groups. So uh, for the first one, we will uh, make, it's not currently a label, but it should be a label uh, where it says name. Okay, so we'll make a label for uh, name because it's going to be pointing to this guy and this guy will be called, the ID will be name. So label for name and we will put the label in here. And then we will have a class of, oh, I always forget this, uh, form label group or group label form. I don't, I never remember the, th the column, call form label, cheese, call form label and we need to outline how big we want it to be for now we'll start with two and then this guy we need to remember that the inputs usually are wrapped in div uh, classes column so two plus what two plus what is 12 two plus 10 is 12 therefore we make it 10 bring this guy up and then the input type text needs to also have a class form something form control i think it is let me see, yeah, form control. And then all this should be wrapped in a class called form group row. So all of this here should be wrapped in a div called form group and row. So two different classes and we'll bring this up. And the reason why I'm going quick here is because I've already talked about all this stuff before. Um, so this is just me going as quickly as I can to get things looking nice so that we can move on to the next uh, task, which will be to add some more business logic uh, in our application here. So let me just do this for these guys, outline the form group rows uh, like so. We can also get rid of the BRs. We don't need these BRs. Uh, I don't think we ever use line breaks anymore when we uh, are leveraging something like, um, what you call it, uh, bootstrap here. So just so you know, uh, okay, so now let's bring in uh, this guy. We'll have a div wrapping it. I'm just gonna do this quickly. So the inputs need a div wrapping them. Da -da -da -da. Input will have a div wrapping it. And then input down here will have a div wrapping it like so. And we also need to make sure we bring in the class of form control for these 
input boxes. And then we need to make sure we turn these um, uh, these into labels because right now they're not, not they're, they are not labels, so therefore we can't really apply any class to them. Um, so that's not good. Let's make the label for what for username is the property or the ID that's going to be created. Uh, so this is for that um, the username uh, input box, and then the class is going to be call two and call oh was it form label? There we go. I had to cheat and look up a bit. Email address, and then we can do the same thing down here. Label four is password is gonna be the name of the thing because this is password here. That'll create a, an element with the ID of password. That needs to match the ID of this element. Um, class equals call two, we'll say, and call form label is the other class to make it look pretty, label. And once more, label for equals, hopefully you can guess what I'm going to put for the four here. I'm going to make it, the ID is confirmed password. So there we go, it's a great example of what I'm doing to match. The ID is what I'm matching. TH field will generate on its own an ID with the name of the property, which is why uh, I have been choosing these names, right? I've been looking at the property of the user that is on the model. Uh, but this guy doesn't have that, so we can just go right for the ID. Uh, where am I? For confirm password class is uh, column two and column form label. And then uh, confirm password. Okay, refresh. Ta-da! So now these look a little better, but they're not yet responsive. So as you can see, it don't look too good when we uh, shrink this stuff down. So uh, really this should not be called two. This should probably be uh, call MD2. If that's what we, yeah, we ended on call MD2. It was probably the, uh, the right move. So we should label these as call MD2. Uh, call MD2. And then these should be call MD10. Because 2 plus what is 12, 2 plus 10 is 12. So that'll be for the mediums, but now we've done, since we've done mediums, we also need to do the rest, right? We need to go below medium, we need to go to the small. Uh, so what is it going to do for the small? Well, actually, it, it figures it out all on its own, which is actually kind of nice. Um, I wasn't expecting that. Uh, it's still not entirely nice here. I would like potentially to have more room for the label, uh, but I actually don't mind that. So believe it or not, it kind of figures things out on its own. So hey, there you go. Uh, okay, so that is, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm satisfied, I like that. So that is um, the augmentation of this screen uh, in, well, very quickly. So when you know what you're doing and when you know how to work with this stuff, it can be quick. It doesn't have to take an hour to do one page. You can do it in about five minutes. Um, without having to talk or if you don't have to talk or anything like that, okay? The other thing we can do is make these buttons larger. This, this button, button looks kind of small in comparison to this whole form. Um, the other thing is I kind of want it to be on the right-hand side just because typically going to the next step is typically on the right. So I'm going to make this go to the right, which is, I think, float right was the class that we use. There we go. And I think, if I remember correctly... You can say BTN LG to make it have a large button. Look at that. That's a nice big button. Big old beautiful button. And then I guess potentially we could also have another button here uh, that is a type button um, that says, uh, let's see, info. Uh, maybe potentially says back or something like that. Uh, and then not float right, sorry. Okay, so maybe we want a back button. So when we click on this button, it should go back to the previous screen. Um, how would we make that work when we click on it? I guess we can assign an ID to it and call it back. And um, in our header, we can have a little script type is uh, JavaScript. And we can have it say... Um, document dot get element by id back dot oh what is it on click uh, I'm doing this without I'm not using jQuery because I'm apparently too lazy to bring jQuery in um, no let me bring jQuery in just because I'm I'm so used to jQuery and I I think I ranted at the beginning of this talking about why I'm using jQuery um, because you know so many companies use it 
So it's very useful to know it. So let me bring, let me, let me change this into jQuery code. So I'll bring in our jQuery initializer code. We always need to make sure that we embed everything into the this initializer type code. Uh, otherwise, jQuery won't work properly. And then we'll get the element by ID back and we'll say on click, uh, we should have it do something. And what is it that we want it to do? We want it to um, go back to where we were, which is window, is it window? No, location.href, maybe it's window.location. Window.location.href equals, um, and it's slash login is where we were. Uh, so when we click on that button, it'll go back to the login screen. So click on back, goes to login. Click on create account, goes to the create account screen, okay? Uh, the other thing that we potentially could do here is make the, uh, uh, the font here bold, potentially, right? For the labels, um, we could do that. Uh, no, let's not get sidetracked with that for now. Um, but I would like to make these buttons bigger. So on the create account screen, the buttons are big. And on the login screen, the buttons are small. So now we need to sort of keep things looking somewhat similar. So let's we'll augment these to become large buttons. There we go. Cool. Looks good. Looks good. Okay, so there you are, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you quickly augment your uh, screens to be uh, using or leveraging Bootstrap. Um, yeah, great. So now when we log in, I don't remember my, what my username and password is supposed to be. Was it like password123 or something? Yeah, that's what it was. There you go, I remember. So now the next step is to go into uh, the actual, you know, uh, once we log in, we need to start putting real world functionality into uh, our fresh votes application. Sorry, I just knocked the uh, microphone there. So we need to start making this into a real helpful application. So we'll start, um, we'll figure out in the next video what the what the first feature is that we want to start developing. Because um, now we're good. We've, we've got a nice looking front end. We can log in, we can create an account. So what's next is to get into the actual meat and potatoes of making the application do something useful. Okay, so we'll do that in the next video. Can't wait to see you there. Take care of yourself. Happy learning and bye for now.